If you or your loved one has been diagnosed with a gallbladder polyp and you are concerned about what to do next, then this video will add to the information provided by your healthcare team. I will briefly describe what is a polyp, what symptoms arise from a polyp, and can you influence the size of the polyp with your diet. More importantly, the question to answer is when is the right time to consider removal of the gallbladder? What type of operations are performed for gallbladder polyps? And finally, if you do not need to have the gallbladder removed, what is the advice on future surveillance to reduce the risk of malignancy? In this picture, we can see the liver that has the bile tube coming out of it. The liver produces bile, which is one of the main functions amongst many others. The bile comes down this tube and at the side of the gallbladder is a sac-like organ called the gallbladder, which stores bile and squirts it down the bile tube to join with the food coming down from the stomach to help digest the fat. So what is a gallbladder polyp? A polyp is a tiny growth in the lining of the gallbladder as shown over here. The great majority are benign and there are two main varieties. They are either flat as seen over here called sessile polyps or they may have a stalk called pedunculated polyp. A tiny minority may become malignant as seen over here. In this case polyp has developed malignancy which is slowly growing towards the wall of the gallbladder. This is a more advanced stage of malignancy where it has now breached the gallbladder wall and has now reached the liver. Further on in this journey as shown over here gallbladder cancers may get bigger, spread to other organs including the liver or down into the lymph node. Typically gallbladder polyps earlier on do not cause any symptoms unless they are close to the neck of the gallbladder which is this part of the gallbladder and over here they may cause biliary type of pain which is pain below the right rib cage radiating through to the back. Sometimes part of the polyp break free and travel down the gallbladder and may obstruct the gallbladder or further down in the bile duct, giving rise to severe upper abdominal pain and rarely to pancreatitis if it obstructs the lower end of the bile duct, setting off inflammation of the pancreas. Since these growths are fleshy, any diet that we eat coming down into the stomach is not going to influence the outcome of the gallbladder polyp. Hence, you cannot modify the life history of a polyp with diet. Let us examine the association of the size of the polyp with malignancy. So if polyps are measured between six and nine millimeters, then the risk of malignancy is very low indeed. However, research has shown that as soon as the polyps hit the one centimeter mark, up to 1.9 centimeters, there is a moderate to high risk of cancer. Any polyp equal to or bigger than one centimeter should mandate the removal of the gallbladder because the risk of cancer starts to rise significantly as shown in this graph. So this is the size of the polyp and this is the risk of malignancy and you can see that the risk rises very rapidly so that if polyps reach size of two centimeters they're almost always cancerous. So cancer is formed already. Even with sizes between one to 1.9 centimeter the risk rises to between 40 to 70 percent as the size of the polyp increases. So take home message, one centimeter or bigger polyps, the gallbladder needs to come out. Now let's look at other risk factors where size of the polyp does not matter. There's an inflammatory bile duct condition called primary sclerosing cholangitis associated with a very high risk of gallbladder cancer. In the presence of this condition called PSC and a polyp, the gallbladder should be removed. If the gallbladder polyp is found to be sessile, sessile polyp is a flat polyp unlike a pedunculated polyp with a stool. If this is four millimeters or greater, these should mandate removal of the gallbladder. In a, in a study in the UK, age greater than 50 and Indian ethnicity were associated with malignancy in the presence of gallbladder polyp. And finally, if a polyp is enlarging at a rate of two millimeters or greater within a year, and that is another risk factor. Presence of gallstones has been considered as a risk alongside gallbladder polyps. And finally, patients with biliary type pain and gallbladder polyp should strongly consider having the gallbladder removed as well. Now let's look at what type of operations may be performed in the presence of gallbladder polyps. The surgeon needs to modify the technique when removing gallbladder for polyp, especially if polyp is between 1 cm to 1.9 cm in size by removing the deeper layer at the interface between the gallbladder and the liver at the same time because there are lymph channels present in that layer. However, if the size of the polyp is 2 cm or greater, this is gallbladder cancer and this requires an operation at a designated hospital with expertise in liver resection because part of the liver has to be removed to ensure that the tumor is removed completely as well as removing the lymph nodes as outlined over here in green at the time of surgery called lymphadenectomy. 
This is an important fact to remember. Failing to do this for tumors two centimeters or bigger in size may risk an incomplete removal of cancer and thus losing the chance of cure. What if a polyp is found that is less than a centimeter in size, does not have any risk factors and does not cause symptoms? In this situation, if patients are candidate for an operation, then an ultrasound scan is performed at six monthly intervals. What happens after differs from center to center. Some would perform six monthly scans initially and if the polyp is stable for a year, change to a yearly scan. Others would carry on with six monthly scans indefinitely. And finally, how long would you perform the surveillance for? Yet again, there is no clarity yet, but the choice lies between carrying on indefinitely versus stopping at five years if the polyp is stable. Further long-term research on, on this subject is awaited. I would strongly advise you to follow the guidance of your own healthcare team. I hope you found this video of interest. If you have any comments, please do share.